for this patient any any uh, idea what should be started next you have to start a drug there's no option no other option in mean. okay metformin 500 once daily can be considered a choice fine see note if you notice uh, the pp base is high okay and the hpnc is uh, just a bit off the mark ideally it should be as close to 6 as possible or lower so what uh, what is recommended is if there is a drug choice which won't cause hypoglycemia then that should be chosen first metformin okay uh, the other choices would be any of the gliptins maybe sitagliptin 50 mg per day because 50 m uh, sitagliptins the gliptins uh, usually are better to control postprandial surges in blood sugars and they are also very less likely to cause hypoglycemia another choice for this patient would be voglibos voglibos also let's say in simple words it delays or slows down the absorption of uh, glucose from the gut so the postprandial peak will be lower so if the sugar is rising to around 250 let's say roughly once you add voglibos 0.2 mg just before the start of that meal the sugars will rise lower let's assume it's to be around 200 if that happens consistently with some change in uh, or care for towards the diet the hpnc should inch closer to uh, 6.0 metformin sitagliptin voglibos all of them can easily lower hpnc uh, by about 0.5 to 1 point on an average i hope the answer is clear there the same scenario 40 year old male fbs 100 ppbs of 250 hpnc 6.8 in this case i am adding a catch the body mass index is 20 20 so we discussed metformin sitagliptin and voglibos as the three drugs which can be considered for this patient with a bmi of 20 which drug would you like to go for first okay here the answer would be probably sitagliptin or even voglibos metformin can cause a weight reduction of 1 to 2 kilos depending on the dose and the duration here the body mass index is already on the lower side so you would like to avoid a drug which would cause weight loss or rather the drug should be weight neutral ideally so sitagliptin or voglibos would be the options if the body mass index is 23 in this case um you can go for all these options another option if the person is on the higher side uh, is is on the obese side you can go for metformin definitely uh and another option would also come in that is pioglitazone but pioglitazone should be uh, considered for patients who are having both a rise in fasting as well as postprandial blood sugar ideally and a body mass index which is on the lower side or the or the middle side or the normal side pioglitazone can cause weight gain so if the person is already obese you can start pioglitazone there's no harm in it uh, like there's nothing against it but you have to warn the patient that it may cause 1 to 2 kilos of weight gain by itself so uh, if you have noticed you know in this scenario just by changing the body mass index of the person the choice of drug has changed this is the next scenario assume it's a 50 year old female with a fps of 200 and ppbs of 140 the hbavnc 6.2 she is on metformin 2 grams per day already and glimepride of 1 mg per day what drug adjustments would you like to do for this lady any answers please answer even if you are wrong it's okay because in practice also we make errors very frequently so it's okay to make mistakes that will trigger some discussion also so most of the times 
if people are inching their hba1c towards um, 6.2 yeah that answer is good actually uh, dr ashima sansad continue the same it's a very acceptable answer provided the patient does not have hypoglycemia always keep in mind sulfonylureas like glimepride glipenclamide glipizide glicazide all of them can cause hypoglycemia if the patient is not having hypoglycemia is comfortable with the drug is okay with the food timings regular then the same drug regimen can be continued since the hba1c is fairly well controlled especially in hazardous professions like auto drivers drivers etc um it's better to perhaps avoid the sulfonylurea class of drugs for this reason uh, because it can cause hypoglycemia while driving it can be a dangerous situation so bus drivers truck drivers school van drivers all these professions you should be very very careful um if you if at all you have to give a sulfonylurea you may avoid a long acting sulfonylurea like glimepride and perhaps choose a shorter acting sulfonylurea like glicazide or glipizide again the cost also has to be taken into account because even the short acting sulfonylureas if given two or three times a day can easily add up to 12 to 13 rupees per day for the person and you can also give the patient a choice that since the hp1c is 6.2 it's very well controlled sugar uh the glimepride can be replaced with any any guess which which group of drugs a gliptin should be fine like sitagliptin vildagliptin etc should be fine it will have a similar um uh, glycemic control for this particular person and uh, the the risk of hypoglycemia will be very very minimal with any gliptin which you may choose pioglitazone also can be Uh, consider for this person at a very low dose like 7.5 mg should suffice although the books say 15 or 30 mg as the usual therapeutic dose in practice we see that 7.5 mg pioglitazone also tends to work however pioglitazone may not uh, control the postprandial blood sugars as well as maybe a sulfonylurea or a gliptin so be careful if the person is okay with it fine if the person is of normal weight or underweight pioglitazone may be a good choice if the person wants a weight neutral drug perhaps uh, agliptin would be a good choice even voglibos may be considered for replacement this is scenario number 4 a 30 year old male detected to have diabetes last month refused any medicines at that time tried diet and lifestyle measure management partially the fbs ppbs is 350 and 400 with his partial control of diet and lifestyle his hba1c has come down from 12 to 11 his body mass index is 3030 any suggestions metformin and insulin initiation metformin okay all right there are reasonable uh, starting drugs no doubt about that most of the guidelines say that if the hba1c is above 9 you may have to consider insulin as one of the first choices to start with that's true metformin will reduce the need of insulin also the body mass index is 30 so yes definitely metformin and insulin are good combinations to start since the hba1c is as high as 12 and 11 metformin alone might not help reduce the sugars to an hba1c of say 7 or 8 because on an average metformin is expected to reduce the hba1c by 1.5 to maximum 2 let's say it's more like 1 to 1.5 with extremely good diet and lifestyle management and uh, and weight management maybe eventually this person will need to be only on metformin that also may be true but it will take time so for quicker management an insulin should be considered now in this person if you notice the fasting sugar is 350 and the postprandial is 400 there's only a difference of 50 points between the fasting and the postprandial values so naturally if we try to control the fasting sugars if we bring that down to say 110 120 levels then naturally the ppbs is also expected to proportionately come down because post meals the insulin surge is happening that's a good indication 
so uh, yeah so uh, aim for the fasting control pp base should come down by itself if pp base is not getting under fair reasonable control then you can think of adding something to control the postprandial rise in sugars someone has answered that semaglutide is uh, also a good option dr ashima that's an excellent uh, suggestion yes the body mass index is 30 uh the fasting the fasting ppbs are both high and uh, since this person needs to do on to be on weight loss semaglutide is a very good option so in the uh, market recently oral semaglutide has been launched under the brand name rebelsis again for this patient it's not a bad idea to start on insulin and metformin at the start and perhaps add a drug like liraglutide or semaglutide later on maybe after one or two weeks when the sugars are inching towards uh, normalcy maybe later on you will get a chance to reduce or even stop the insulin and switch over to semaglutide and metformin along with better diet and lifestyle management that can bring down the hp1c maybe by 4 to 5 points in 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 total okay the good thing about semaglutide again is that it won't cause or it is very very unlikely to cause severe hypoglycemia the only problem with semaglutide in our usual day to day practice is the cost so liraglutide can cost about 9000 per month semaglutide is expected to cost about 10 to 12000 per month despite the discounts which are offered by online stores but that's a very good option if the patient is affording and is uh, willing to use semaglutide that's that's actually indeed a good uh, first choice of medicine yeah we have covered all these points scenario number 5 a 45 year old salesman with erratic food habits he has got fluctuating sugars mainly because of erratic drug compliance his fasting blood sugar is 150 his pp base is 220 hb1c is 8.5 he is already on full doses let's assume it's on full doses of metformin sitagliptin glenipride and voglibus what would be your next step any suggestions already in four medicines in full dose okay this is interesting actually because as per guidelines after three uh, oral anti diabetic drugs you have to consider adding insulin all right so uh, the option the the answer which was mentioned uh, just now in the chat, chat box i think it's dr ashima has answered again reduce the number of ohas and add long acting insulin along with two or three ohas yes that's what the guideline suggests uh, which oha would you like to reduce glimi pride okay fine so uh, that's a good choice again um, the thing is see in this uh, case metformin and sitagliptin and voglibus three of the drugs are actually not ohas as we call it i'm just telling it for the benefits of the other uh, listeners a uh, spot on the only oha in this group is actually glimi pride they are all oral anti diabetic drugs out of which the oral hypoglycemic drug which can really cause hypoglycemia is actually glimi pride um you may try reducing the glimipride uh it's okay but you have to add one insulin into this if the patient really really insists that he doesn't want to be on insulin at all then maybe the drug of choice another drug which could be considered would be again a low dose pioglitazone because the hp1c is not far off the mark but again the problem is he has got erratic compliance to his uh, oral diabetic anti diabetic medicines uh now again strictly speaking voglibos does not uh, act on the pathophysiology of diabetes in any manner it's not like metformin which would increase insulin sensitivity or peripheral utilization or sitagliptin which would control the postprandial surge or glimipride which would actually uh, produce more insulin voglibos simply retards the absorption of glucose into the into the blood stream so um, it's again um, 
should be okay to continue voglibos in this patient. Even if you don't stop an OAD, it should be okay. Uh, but the insulin of choice, what would it be for this patient? Any suggestions? Here in this patient, it would be okay to start a very low dose of premixed insulin, like 30-70 very, very low dose, two times a day. But again, that's purely considering the cost issue. If cost was not an issue, then perhaps the best insulin for this would be, as you have mentioned, Lantus, um, Lantus insulin, because that would give 24 hour coverage. And this, in this particular patient, if you can knock off one of the oral anti-diabetic drugs, that would perhaps reduce his pill burden. Secondly, uh, you can consider combination therapy for him. Like nowadays, metformin, glimipride, and voglibos are available as a single pill. And metformin, cetagliptin are available as a single pill. So that kind of combinations may be tried to reduce his pill burden. And maybe a single-time insulin should suffice. Try to uh, control the fasting blood sugars and keep it around 100 or 120 levels, which would uh, most probably reduce the PPBS also to around 170, 180 levels, which would in the longer term reduce the HPMC to around 7.5 kind of levels. And then perhaps you can increase the dose of insulin or maybe re-add one of the OVDs if needed. <laughs>